the Canon R5 is going to be announced very shortly, most likely within the next couple of weeks. It's shaping up to be several generations ahead of anything else out there. Can Sony stop them with the a7S III? Will the a7S III offer 8K video, or will it focus on delivering detailed 4K content with amazing low-light sensitivity that the a7S is known for? The Sony a7S III is long past overdue, but it's expected to be announced in April. It was expected to be announced at NAB 2020, but as you know, or may know, that show has been postponed. What will be the capabilities of the a7S III? Let's get into it. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, it's Simon from The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe and like button, as it really helps support my channel. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video are in the description down below. I almost bought the A7S II, I was almost going to say the A7S III, I almost bought the, the A7S II last year, but something was holding me back. You see, I have a Canon 70D right now, and I was very unhappy with what Canon was delivering us. They announced the EOS R, and at that point I knew I had to find something else. So I kept looking. I looked at the Fuji, uh, the Fuji X-T3, I looked at the Panasonic GH5, and I also looked at the A7S. The A7S II is an amazing camera. It's an amazing low light. Um, it's amazing how it performs in low light. But there was one thing that held me back from it, and it was that it used contrast detect autofocus. And for what I do, my run and gun work, I need phase detect. I like how Canon's autofocus is reliable. I always have this rig here set up with continuous autofocus always on, and it never misses. And in my run and gun work, that's important to me. For my studio work, it, it's not such a big deal. I could set it to manual, and I wouldn't have a problem with it. So, because it was running with contrast detect autofocus, I decided to hold off and wait and see what the a7S III would hold. It was rumored that the a7S III was going to come out late last year in the fourth quarter, but it didn't. Before I get into this video, or much further into this video, I want to warn you a little bit. A lot of what I'm going to talk about here is coming from rumor sites, and this information is a little bit stale. The only thing that I received that is relatively new is that it's going to be announced in April. So if you don't like rumors or any of that kind of stuff, you might want to turn away now. But if you do like rumors and you like an interesting discussion, let's get into it. There are two different sensors that are proposed for the a7S III. The first one I'm going to talk about is what is more perceived as being the sensor that it's going to come with, and that's the newly designed Sony 15.36 megapixel full frame sensor. Uh, this sensor actually has a quad Bayer filter. Every camera that's released today, or almost every camera released today, has a Bayer filter. And as you can see from this image, each pixel is made up of four different blocks. And those blocks use uh, RGGB. So in each pixel, you have one photosite that is red, another photosite that is blue, and you have two photosites that are green, and that makes up a single pixel. Now, there are some problems with this type of setup. It would be better, for example, to go with RGB, W, and where double base, W basically just captures all the light coming in and would add to red, green, and blue. So why are we using it? Well, a gentleman by the name of Bear came up with it about 40 or 50 years ago, probably closer to 60 years ago now, and it kind of stuck. It works quite well. We've been able to fiddle around with it, so it actually produces very good results. There are better systems out there. For example, there's a, um, oh, what's it called? Dichro dichromic um, prism-based system, and what happens is you've got this prism that splits the light into red, green, and blue, and each uh, red hits its own separate center, blue hits its own separate center, and same with green, and that information is combined into a single image, and it produces much better um, color accuracy, uh, color detail, saturation, all that stuff. It just looks so much better. But while these cameras do exist, they're bulky, they're boxy, and they're just not very attractive. So most cameras today, including my Canon 70D, uses the Bayer filter using this simple um, structure. The 15.36 megapixel sensor that's rumored to be in this a7S III is going to use something called a quad Bayer filter. And that's a little different. If you look at this slide here, what you can see is each pixel, instead of being made up of four photosites, is made up of 16 photosites. Four of them for red, four for blue, and 16 for green. What this is supposed to give us is, well, one of two things. It's supposed to perform better in low light, if you can believe that. 
the camera already does really, really well in low light, or provide us with more detail. And this is one or the other. It doesn't do both. It's either going to allow you to have more detail or perform better in low light. This is where you're probably reading that the new sensor is going to be 61 megapixels. And that's really not what's going to happen. So there's four times the amount of um, photosites to produce the image. So if you want more detail, then basically it treats the more it treats them more as pixels, so you're actually getting four times as much information. This is very similar to what we see in the Panasonic S1R. In that camera, we can produce 180 megapixel images using pixel shift technology. Uh, Tony Northrup did a really good video looking at this, and yes, you are actually getting 180 megapixels. You're getting a file with literally 180 million pixels in it, but the level of detail that you're getting is more comparable to a 90 megapixel image. And that's the same with this sensor. While yes, it can produce 61 megapixel files, you're really only getting twice as much detail, which is still nice. Look, this is not a bad thing. But the one negative thing here is that there is no 8K. So the rumor that it we're getting 8K, well, you won't be able to do it with the sensor. And I'll get into a bit more of the math later. I won't go too deep into the math, but I'll get into the details of why it can't produce 8K. The other sensor is a 36 megapixel sensor. Now, this sensor is supposed to support 8K, and I have a bit of a problem with that. You see, to be able to produce 8K, you need at least 39 megapixels. And I know some of you are going, wait a minute, that's not the case. You only need 33 megapixels to produce 8K video. If you look at this slide here, a single frame of 8K video set at a 16.9 aspect ratio, UHD, is 7,680 pixels by 4,320 pixels, or for a total of 33,177,000 pixels. That produces 33.2 megapixels, so you'd essentially need at least that from a sensor. The problem is, the A7S III is a full-frame sensor, or has a full-frame sensor, and the aspect ratio of that sensor is 3 by 2. So let's go back and let's take a look at the math one more time. Converting it to 3 by 2 gives you a resolution of 7680 by 5120, and that is 39 million pixels, 321, or a total megapixels of 39.4. So how on earth are we going to be able to get 8K video from a 36 megapixel sensor? And some of the review sites that are looking at rumors have kind of shed light on this as well. It doesn't really make sense. Are they using some sort of strange technology? Could they be using that quad, um, quad bear filter? Well, there's no mention of that. Sure, there might be. And again, this is rumor. This is all speculation. When Sony was asked about providing 4K60 into their next camera, this is what Sony said, one of their executives, uh, Kenji, I believe. I'll put the information at the bottom of the screen so you'll have his exact name. And what he said was, the basic expectation is for things like 4K60, 10-bit, 422, and a lot of manufacturers are doing that right now. But I want to think in a different way and create something that goes beyond our, the expectations of our customers. It's easy to add 4K60, but beyond these specs, a lot of customers have other kinds of demands, and that's what we're researching. This reminds me of what happened with Apple. Apple came out and said, yep, yeah, my bad. The Mac Pro, that trash can one, it, it didn't have the architecture. It's not scalable. Um, we're sorry. And what we're doing is we're going to be meeting with our professionals, the professionals out there that use this product. And we're going to ask them what they need. Sounded good, right? We we're going to have something more modular. And yes, we did get something more modular, but we got a $10,000 basic computer. That's $10,000 base model with the computer and the monitor. And if you're going to get this computer, you pretty well had to get the monitor to go with it. It just kind of lined up. But the video graphics performance wasn't any better than a MacBook Pro for $10,000. So when Sony says they're going back and talking to the professionals, I don't know what that means. Now, I have a few ideas of what I would like to see. The A7S II had 100 megabits per second as its top bandwidth. I'd really like to see that go up to at least 400 or even 500 megabits. 
that would allow us to use codecs such or all I. It would allow us to get much more better detail because right now that 100 megabits is not bad. It doesn't produce garbage. It produces some really good results. But in low light, if you're going to start pushing it, you're going to start to have some problems. So yes, we want to see a little bit of improvement in low light. We want to see less noise. We want to see 4K 60 and you know what? It'd be really nice to have 4K 120. And I think that's very doable here. I'd be surprised, in fact, if Sony doesn't give us at least 120 or give us 120 frames per second in 4K. And I believe it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to get 10-bit 422 internal, as they've said that. I don't need 8K, but I'm going to get the R5. I don't even need 6K. So does anything more than 4K matter? Well, yes, it does. But not in a lot of the way that most of us think. I produce mostly 1080p, and when I upgrade to my next camera, I'm going to shoot a lot more in 4K, but I'm most likely still going to export in 1080p. What 4K gives me for those 1080p is a master file where I can zoom in, I can crop in, get more info, get a different angle without getting a soft image. And what 6K or 4.8K or 5.5K, anything above 4K gives you in a 4K project is that ability to use that as a master file so you can crop in and produce better results. And for people that are professionals, this is very handy. For ordinary folks like me, it's not such a big deal. 4K 120 is more than enough. So that's why I'm really curious to know what Sony comes up with. Which professionals are they talking to? Which users, which customers are they talking to? Are we gonna get something like the Panasonic S1H? which is a very nice camera, but it's very expensive. And of course, I certainly hope that Sony doesn't stick with that contrast detect autofocus system. It still doesn't quite work for Panasonic. IBIS, it works quite well. So if you hold the camera steady, if you hold it like this, it's going to produce a very usable image, but I would like to see them improve that a little bit more. I really do hope they jump on board with a face detect autofocus system. Autofocus has progressed a lot in the last five years. Look at where Canon's come. Um, pretty well anybody now that produces an autofocus system, it's, it, it's going to be phase detect. It's going to do face detect, obviously. It's going to do eye detect. And what we're seeing now is a lot more cameras are doing animal eye detect, which is great if you're doing wildlife photography. Please, Sony, I hope you do not keep contrast detect autofocus in there. Um, the, the problem with the A7S II is it just doesn't keep up. Uh, it pulses. Now, granted, if you're doing event work, if you're doing studio work, or if you've got a crew and you can have one person dedicated to pulling ma focus manually, that's great. This camera gives you the tools to do that. You have zebras, you have focus peaking. On my Canon 70D, I can't pull focus manually. I don't have any of those tools. However, there is one problem. Based on the specs that I've seen, there doesn't appear to be room for the phase detect autofocus points something or anything similar to the dual pixel autofocus. So we'll have to see. I'd be surprised though if it's not in there. Now, what are some of the issues I'd like to see fixed? The menu system. Yes, I am primarily a Canon user and yes, I complain about other cameras, Sony and others, um, not having a very good menu system, but this is not a silly thing to complain about. Workflow is very important to me. Some features and functions I don't access all the time, and I want things to make sense. I want them to follow a certain workflow to, to just work for me. And if they're kind of haphazard and over, all over the place, I have to spend time looking for them. I have to consult a manual. I really just don't want to be able to do that. So hopefully they've really thought that out. And battery life? This is, after all, primarily a video camera. Why on earth can't they just give us at least two to three hours of record time? Sure, make the body a little bigger, bigger, make it a little heavier. That's very important because if we're going to be shooting video and we're only getting about 45 minutes to an hour, that's when the battery is new. As it starts to get older, that's really not a lot of time. Oh, and for those of you that do like pulling focus manually, how about some manual focus rings on the lenses themselves? That would be really, really awesome. Now, in terms of photography, and I still think that even though I spend maybe 5% of my time shooting photos, you, you want a camera that produces good images. Now, the a7S III is primarily a video camera. It produces 15 megapixels according to the popular rumors. And that 61 megapixel file really is only going to give you about 30 megapixels of quality. 
15 megapixels isn't that great. It's kind of limited. It's kind of a niche. Um, but if you're buying this for video, great. You're not going to be buying this camera for its photo capabilities. This is a video camera. Sony, you've been way too quiet on this. I was eager to buy this camera. I was waiting for this camera. And I was hoping to buy it. Five years is an awful long time to sit on something. I have a lot of Canon glass, and yet I was willing to switch over to this camera. But you took too long. You didn't give us any information. There wasn't even a courtesy vague development announcement. And then when Canon announced the R5, and the rumors about the R6 came out, I'm kind of in a holding pattern. I want to see what Canon has to offer. Even though the Sony a7 III might be a better camera, I've got to look at the investment I have in lenses. And I, I think this is a very important point to bring up. A lot of us, we're not Canon fanboys, we're not Sony fanboys. At one point in our life, we wanted to buy a camera, we did some research, and we bought that camera, whether it be Nikon, Sony, or Canon, um, Olympus, Minolta, what have you. But once we bought into that system and started buying lenses, it became very cost prohibitive to jump out of it. And yes, some people might call us Sony fanboys or Canon fanboys, but that's not really the case. Yes, we can see better cameras out there, but the cost of us jumping ship is very difficult. And it's really nice when the platform you're purchased into has regular updates, has regular communication, and Sony has just not been there. I really wish they would provide us with more information about what they're doing, what they're planning, and we need to see real specs. So if it's supposed to be announced next month, which is what I'm hearing, it's going to be announced sometime in April, that's great. Because Canon has stepped up. The R5 is looking to be a very amazing camera. Just in this video here, um, I talked about how Canon Australia had said, yes, it's going to have 8K video, uncropped, with dual pixel autofocus in all 8K modes. And that's a pretty big deal. Now, there are rumors that maybe... 4K will be cropped. Maybe it'll be cropped heavily. We don't know. But then that's where the R6 comes in, where it's going to have 4K, and most likely that wouldn't be cropped. So Sony, if you're listening, tell us what you're working on. A lot of us are very interested in this camera, and we'd like to see it very soon. If you're not going to be releasing it in the next couple of weeks or in the next couple of months, how about you throw us a bone with the development announcement? Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.